Welcome to Lesson 1D, Density and Related Properties. In this lesson, we define density and some related properties like specific gravity and specific weight. We'll talk about the ideal gas approximation, and we'll discuss some related properties like the coefficient of volume expansion and the coefficient of compressibility. We'll also do some example problems. What is density? Density is simply mass divided by volume. In my notation, curly brackets around a variable means the dimensions of so the dimensions of density are mass per volume, or L cubed. Square brackets around a variable indicate the units. Typical units of density are kilogram per meter cubed. Thermodynamicists prefer specific volume instead of density. Specific volume is defined as volume over mass, which we can see from our definition is 1 over rho, just the reciprocal. Fluid mechanicians prefer density instead of specific volume, so rho is just 1 over V or M over V. We will use density most of the time rather than specific volume. Consider some volume of fluid, volume V, mass M. We can calculate the density as M over V. Now imagine shrinking this volume to a very small volume. We would have a much smaller volume and a much smaller mass but we can still define the density as m over v. Now imagine shrinking this all to a point or a fluid particle at some point x, y, z in the flow. In general, density is a function of x, y, z and time at any point in the flow. This breaks down if the particle is on the order of the mean free path. In other words, we assume a continuum flow where you can shrink down to as small as you want. Specific gravity is defined as density divided by the density of some standard substance. The most common standard substance is water at 4 degrees C and 1 atmospheric pressure, and that's because the density of this water is 1,000 kilogram per meter cubed, a nice round number. The dimensions of specific gravity are expressed as a dash or a 1, meaning it's dimensionless. We can see that easily it's a density divided by another density, so it has no dimensions. We do the same thing with units. In other words, there's no units either. As I said, this density of water is the most common reference density, and it's used for liquids, solids, and sometimes even for gases. But for gases, an alternative standard substance is sometimes used. Standard dry air, that means air with no humidity, at 0 degrees and 1 atmospheric pressure, where the density is 1.29 kilogram per meter cubed. This alternative SG also has no dimensions and no units. If we're talking about standard dry air, its SG with this reference is just 1. If we use the water density as a reference, SG of standard dry air is 1.29 divided by 1,000, which comes out to 0 0.00129. You must know which reference density is being used, or you can get yourself confused and be off by a factor of almost 1,000. Let's do a quick example. What's the specific gravity of water at 20 degrees C? You can look up the density of water at 20 degrees from the appendix or online. At 20 degrees in one atmosphere, the density is 998.0 kilogram per meter cubed. Using the standard water density as a reference, our specific gravity is 0 0.9980 to four digits. Compared to the table, this table says it's the specific gravity of some substances at 20 degrees C in one atmosphere, and it gives the specific gravity as 1.0. This would be the case if the water were at 4 degrees C, which is the standard reference. So this really should say 0 0.9980 to be consistent. Another property related to density is specific weight. It's defined as the weight of an object per unit volume. It's just like density, except we have weight instead of mass in the numerator. The symbol in the Changgao Symbola book is gamma sub s. Again, we take a volume of fluid with some weight and some volume, and we can calculate the specific weight. The dimensions are now force per volume. Force is mass times acceleration, ml over t squared, and our l cubed is at the bottom. So this reduces to m over l squared t squared. Typical units, since it's a force per volume, are newtons per meter cubed. I like to use the word manipulate, where we take this equation and modify it in some way, manipulate it. Start with gamma s is w over v, but the weight is mass times gravity, and we recognize m over v as the density, so this becomes rho g. So you'll often see this as the definition of specific weight in textbooks. But fundamentally, it's just the weight per unit volume. By the way, this is sometimes useful because rho and g often occur together in fluid mechanics problems. Personally, I don't use gamma s very much. I like to just write out rho and g. Now let's talk about the ideal gas approximation. Any equation of state is an equation that relates temperature, density, and pressure of a substance. Probably the best known equation of state is the ideal gas approximation. In this course, 
all gases we analyze will be approximated as ideal gases. Here's the famous ideal gas law in the form preferred by fluid mechanicians, P equal rho RT. R is the specific gas constant. It's a constant for a specific gas, but it depends on which gas is being analyzed. There is a universal gas constant, RU. This constant is independent of which gas is being analyzed. It's universal. Here is its value in two different sets of units. The specific gas constant is calculated by dividing the universal gas constant by the molecular weight m of the gas, r equal ru over m. So as long as we know the molecular weight of the gas, we can find the specific gas constant. I want to emphasize that the ideal gas approximation is an approximation valid for some range of pressure and temperature. If you go outside of that range, then the approximation breaks down. Let's do an example. Suppose we have air at 30 degrees C and 1 atmosphere pressure. Let's calculate the density of this air. First I calculate the specific gas constant, the universal gas constant, divided by the molecular weight of the air, which you can look up also on the equation sheet for students in my class. 28.97 kilogram per kilomole. Always write your units. Kilomoles cancel out. We get 0.286986 kilojoule per kilogram K. Now we apply the ideal gas equation. Solving for density, density is P over RT. We plug in our numbers, with units of course. Atmospheric pressure is 101.325 kPa. Plug in the value for R from up here. I'm keeping more digits than necessary to avoid round off error as we've discussed previously. We always have to convert temperature to Kelvin and notice that the Ks cancel out. I need a couple unity conversion factors. Kilopascal is 1,000 newtons per meter squared, so I write my unity conversion factor this way, and a kilojoule is 1,000 newton meters. So the thousands cancel out, kilojoules cancel out, kPa's cancel out, and the newtons cancel out. We're left with kilogram on the top and meter cubed on the bottom, which is what we want for density. I urge you to first write out the answer to several significant digits, and then in the end, give the answer to the appropriate number of significant digits, in this case three, for standard engineering analysis. Note that this R for air comes in handy a lot and is often used in this course, so I provide it here and on the equation sheet in three different units. These are to four significant digits. How do we go from these units to these units? This is just another exercise using unity conversion ratios. A kilojoule is a thousand newton meters. Kilojoules cancel out. And a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. I always remember that one by Newton's second law. That gets rid of kilograms and newtons. We end up with meters squared over second squared k or 287.0 meters squared per second squared k as our answer, verifying this. Here are some miscellaneous properties. First, the coefficient of volume expansion. Here are some other names for it. We use the symbol beta. It's defined as, by the way, triple equal sign means defined as, negative one over rho, del rho del t at constant p. This notation is common, partial derivative of rho with respect to temperature. Density depends on temperature and pressure. We take the partial with respect to temperature holding pressure constant. That's the definition for infinitesimal changes in temperature and density. There's a negative sign in this definition since density goes down as temperature goes up for most substances. Everybody knows that warm air rises. It's less dense than cool air. There's an expression that heat rises due to buoyancy. That's why there's a negative sign in this definition. For finite changes rather than infinitesimal changes, we approximate beta as negative delta rho over rho delta t, just a finite version of this infinitesimal change, and we write out at constant pressure. By the way, beta has dimensions of 1 over temperature and units of 1 over Kelvin. If we're talking about liquids, there are tables for various substances that list beta. For example, water at 20 degrees C, we look up beta. It's 0.195 times 10 to the minus 3, 1 over Kelvin. For an ideal gas, P equal rho RT, solve for rho, P over RT. By this fundamental definition, del rho del T at constant P will be negative P over RT squared, since there's a T in the denominator here. Therefore, from this definition, beta is negative 1 over rho times this. The negative signs cancel. I just rearrange things, and since P is rho RT, by our ideal gas law, this quantity is equal to 1. So beta is just 1 over T for an ideal gas. So obviously beta is not a constant. It varies with temperature. There's a related property called coefficient of compressibility. We give it the symbol of a Greek letter kappa. It's defined as rho del P del rho at constant temperature. 
Again, this is for infinitesimal changes. The dimensions of kappa are force per unit area by this pressure. The densities cancel, so the dimensions are force per length squared. Typical units are pascals, or sometimes atmospheres. Let's do the same thing we did previously and make an approximation for finite changes. Kappa is approximately then rho delta p over delta rho at constant temperature. There's another property called isothermal compressibility. Alpha is just 1 over kappa. So it's just the reciprocal of kappa, so it's not really a new property. I mention it because if you can't find kappa, you might be able to find alpha online or in some tables. Then just take the inverse to get kappa. Again, let's discuss for liquids and gases. You can look at tables or online to find kappa. Water at 20 degrees C, for example, I found alpha as 4.80 times 10 to the minus fifth units of 1 over atmosphere. So kappa is just the reciprocal, or 20833.3 atmospheres. This, of course, is too many significant digits, but I'll use that if I have to use this kappa in an analysis. For an ideal gas, again, p equal rho rt, del p del rho at constant t. Again, from your math class, you just pretend that t is a constant here and take the derivative. This one's easier. It's just rt. And then from our definition up here, we get rho times that derivative, which was rt. We recognize this as pressure, p equal rho rt from here. So kappa is just equal to p for an ideal gas, which is nice and simple. But again, it's not a constant. Kappa varies with pressure when we're talking about changes in pressure. Now let's do an example problem, the compressibility of water. We're going to combine both a compression and a heating. So it's compressed from 0.5 atmospheres to 1.5 atmospheres and heated from 30 degrees C to 60 degrees C. We can call these state 1 and state 2. And let's approximate the density of this water at the two conditions and compare. We will approximate for small delta P and delta T by combining delta rho from both of the above. So delta rho is approximately, let me scroll up, the delta rho from here is rho delta P over kappa. And then we scroll up again to this one where delta rho is negative rho delta T beta. So we plug that in. Make sure you include the negative sign, rho beta delta T with the negative sign. So this equation allows us to calculate the change of density for both the change of pressure and a change of temperature, keeping in mind that we're assuming small delta P and delta T. You'd have to do a differential analysis to do this exactly, but we're going to use a constant kappa and a constant beta at some average temperature and pressure and we'll use rho 1 here. Let's calculate the average temperature. We get 45 degrees C. For water, we look up beta at 45 degrees C. Beta is 0.415 times 10 to the minus 3, 1 over K. We're going to use this as a constant, even though we know that beta changes with temperature. That's our approximation. The average pressure, similarly, is 1.0 atmosphere. Again, it's a little easier to find alpha, which, as you recall, alpha is just 1 over kappa. These are not in the Chengal Symbola textbook. You have to look online. I found alpha as 4.48 times 10 to the minus 5, 1 over atmosphere at 1 atmosphere and 45 degrees C. Alpha actually depends on both pressure and temperature for liquids. We can approximate rho 2 as rho 1 plus delta rho using delta rho from our equation above. You can look up the density of water at 30 degrees C. It's not a strong function of pressure, so we use the table for one atmosphere. So it's 996.0 kilogram per meter cubed plus that same rho 1 times alpha delta p 1.5 minus 0.5 atmospheres minus beta times delta t which is 30 k. Remember that a change of 60 to 30 degrees c is 30 degrees c which is the same as 30 k. The k's cancel. This first part is 4.48 times 10 to the negative 5. The second part is negative 0.01245. So we see that the temperature effects dominate compared to pressure effects. We've gone up by a whole atmosphere, but we've changed very little compared to this. When we plug everything in, we get rho 2 is 983.644 kilogram per meter cubed. We're probably pushing three digits here, but I'll give my final answer to three significant digits. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.